Can't stand. Hello. Two of our greatest sporting events dominate Grandstand today. One of them is only just beginning, the other is reaching its climax. It's FA Cup semi-final day and Hillsborough, as it has so often before, provides an impressive setting for Liverpool versus Nottingham Forest. A repeat of last season's enthralling semi at the same venue. Aldridge is there! For the tenth time in the past 11 seasons, Villa Park stages the other semi-final, Everton versus Norwich City. No club has appeared in more semis than Everton. This is their 22nd. The last was a winning day in 1986. In sharp contrast, you have to go back to 1959 for Norwich City's last semi-final appearance in the FA Cup. In fact, it was their one and only appearance in the last four. For the last 12 years, the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield has provided the stage for the best snooker players in the world. Today is the first of 17 days which lead to the world crown. Steve Davis currently reigns and is chasing a hat-trick of wins and a record equaling sixth title. But even favourites fail sometimes. He's done it. Since losing to Dennis Taylor, Steve Davis has been world champion twice more. He starts his defence against Welshman Steve Newbury. On the subject of Newbury, we'll be paying four visits to the race course of that name. It's Grandstand's first flat racing of the season, and it includes the first classic trial for the Colts. Silverstone has been the scene of many great motor races. Formula 3 provides our action today. Well, it's already been an exciting week. It's Gillespie's header. Beardsley, McMahon. Good play by Liverpool. Barnes is on the left wing, running past Chettle now. Well found by McMahon. Aldridge is in the centre. Still Barnes. Penalty. Penalty to Liverpool. calling on all their hardened experience as Forrest start the second half in the ascendancy but this is what happened before Barnes Aldridge is there Aldridge and exactly the same again Wilkinson and Foster facing the thrower Wilkinson oh Hanson didn't get there and it's gone in <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thanks, it was funny, I actually did an interview with you after the game when Brian Clough had his arm around me and I thought that was a nice touch, you know, because obviously he'd just lost and uh, it's not easy when you've lost a semi-final but uh, he was great about it and uh, that made the day all the better Going back as well after the game and we were going past our supporters and they were waving and smiling at us but I mean it was still a feeling, of, well it was a horrible feeling to experience an FA Cup semi-final defeat Can you put it into words, what it's like? I don't believe you can, no, because it's, 
you're that close and for the, the biggest trophy and the, uh, the glamorous trophy in, in English football and, and you don't do it and you know this it's like you say you sit down and watch the cup final and think mm. <laughs> what might have been mm. there'd be more experience last year a lot of young players they had um, and a, a full year has gone past now so there'd be a lot more experience they won't be happy about getting beaten in the semi-final last year so I think they'll be going all out to win this one what did you feel when the draw was made again this time and you saw it was Liverpool again? Is it a chance for revenge? Uh, I was expecting Liverpool. We always, we never normally get a very good draw. Liverpool was the toughest game. They were looking to miss us as, as probably as much as we were looking to miss them. Um, if I could have had anyone, I'd have probably wished for Everton. But I'm quite happy playing them. We're in the semi-final, that's what counts. If you did play, you'd be the only, we think you'd be the only basic change, the only new face in the Liverpool side. That's right, from last season, but it uh, shouldn't make any difference. No, What's it like to get into the Liverpool team? It's fantastic. At the minute, like, you know, the lads are playing well and everything's going well, so it's, uh, it's a pleasure to play with them. Be honest, what was your thoughts when they signed Rushy? What did you think? Um, I was pleased for, for the club and Rushy, um, you know, for him to come back and the people, you know, respect him a great deal. I was a bit worried about my own um, situation, obviously, but I just had to battle away and um, see what happens, you know, and, and it hasn't been too bad, to be fair. And plus, we were proved that we can play together as well, you know, we've done well in the matches where we played together. Barnes, beautifully done, and that's number two, Ian Rush, the scorer. How would you think Forrest are different from the side which played 12 months ago at Hill? Well, for the start, I think there's five different players in the team, which is half the team, really. And also, I think the players that did play in that game have gone to school over the last year. They've played in a lot more important pressure games, and I think they're better players for it. Gone to school? And came close, and it's 2 now. Leeds come and done a very good job for us. I think we'd, uh, we've always played with a big uh, centre forwarder, you know, and at Forest. And I think a lot of people were surprised when we bought Lee because they were querying his uh, ability on the ball, on, on the floor. But he's come in and proved a lot of people wrong. He's very strong. He runs past defenders and, and takes them on. And he's, he's done. I think he scored more goals with his feet this year than, than ever, and he's done exceptionally well for us. What about Parker? Scored some important goals for you. Yeah, we stuck him out on the left. I think uh, the new signings always get put out on the left wing at, at Forest and <laughs> to see how they cope with it. And he's done very well at it. You know, it's, good, it's a bit strange for him. And is there a different feeling? Old sense of security. You know, you always feel as if you know you're going through the game comfortably. And then because they, they're very good at, on, on, on the break, on counter attacking, they've got quick players up front, especially on the wing. And uh, so you always feel as if you're in command of the game and then all of a sudden something happens and, and they've, they've either scored a goal or, 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 you know, forced a corner or forced a good save from the keeper. How, how would you describe Liverpool's qualities? Well, they're priceless, aren't they? I mean, they've, season after season after season, they just keep the same things going, the same principles. And they keep finding players and bringing them on and, you know, keeping them in the reserves until they're, they're just right for the, for the first team. And they always play the same way, you know, exactly how the game's going to be played against them. And it's just combating your skill against those. Beardsley. Oh, lovely footwork by Beardsley. And inside Stanislaus to pick out Houghton. Maybe now. A little cheer for McMahon. How good are Liverpool playing at the moment? It's, I think it's still not as good as last season. But um, we've had a lot of injuries and uh, we knew that we could only get better when we started the season. And uh, it's proved the point, really. Interesting, it's Liverpool Forest because it's almost as much a, a, a match between the two managers as the teams, isn't it? I mean, obviously, there's Kenny's team and then there's Mr. Clough on the other side of the fence. That's true, both managers uh, are always in the headlines. Um, I, think, I think it works to the advantage of the team sometimes because people are not analysing how the players are doing and who's playing well and who's playing badly. So both teams just go out and do the business and let the managers do the talking. You've got the opposite extremes of personality. 
one flamboyant extrovert and the other, you know, a bit of an introvert. But they do their jobs very, very well. Which one's the, <laughs> which one's the extrovert? <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> I think, to be fair, when you're in the build-up, you sort of think of Brian Clough more than you do not on Forest. I, I think he is the club, really. Um, it, from top to bottom, he makes sure that everything runs smoothly. And, and his effect is, is, is immense, really. He intrigues me. Uh, I think that he could bring possibly the best out of me, as uh, Kenny Douglas has. He likes to keep you distant. That's what I find anyway. Uh, no matter how much he tells you, oh, what a good captain you are or whatever, you know in the back of your mind that he'll be the first one to kick you out of the team if you don't do it for him. So as far as I'm concerned, I know exactly where I stand with him and that I'm certainly not going to get complacent about being his captain because I know tomorrow if he kicks me out of the team, he won't remember my name. Is that the warning to Forrest? Liverpool going into the semi on a run of good results and the confidence high? Well, that's a warning to them. They've got an even better warning for us. They've just won the cup. 